wasn't an alcoholic who bashed his kids and bashed his wife and social workers got involved. He didn't have a criminal history, so the police weren't involved. We were beautifully, perfectly respectable and beautifully, perfectly invisible. So dad has manipulated everything, everybody. I can't imagine what that's like to find out what, that your daughter's been so violently abused, but also by her father, your husband. I, can you articulate to me at all what goes through your mind when you learn that? Shock, I think. Shock, distress, fury that you didn't know, absolute wild anger. In the book, Jenny writes that she does feel there's something odd happening in her stomach and I think you have a look or she shows you. Did you never wonder or think, what is this? No, I saw the swelling. I thought, oh, isn't that good? She's reached puberty. She's at the beginning of, you know, growing up. I didn't, you don't think pregnancy when they're 10. Or eight. Eight. He made me pregnant seven times before I was 14. And he, in one way or another, murdered each of those babies, whether he assaulted me until I had a miscarriage or beat me on my belly until I lost the baby and hemorrhaged in the garden. He stole my babies, all seven of them. I have always wanted a large family. Sorry. Can I ask you this, Jenny? We, you can separate your child from your father, is what you're saying. Oh, it's my child, it's not his. That's why, He's so just... that, that's why you can love this child, because yes, you can yes. separate this child from your father. Absolutely. Yeah. Because, sorry, they are my children. He's just genetic material. Those babies were mine. And this Mother's Day just gone, I named them. I actually gave them names for the first time ever. And in the book, I have dedicated the book to my seven babies that are in my heart, but they're not in my hands. It's very difficult to say, hey, mom, where the bloody hell were you? What was going on for you that you didn't see this? It's an impossible question to ask when you're living with her. When I moved out, that's when I had the space to think, okay, where was mum? What happened? How come mum didn't see? And that's when all the things that I'd heard and I'd known, the puzzle pieces were there. I just put the puzzle pieces together in my own time, my own safe space. And then I went back to mum and I started to talk to mum. So the army has stood down, allowing the, the questions to come through and giving her the space to answer them. And that's been incredible. And as a result, our relationship, which was always strong, is the best it's ever been. You are such an extraordinary couple, really, a mother-daughter, uh, to have come so far and reached this point where you can be closer and love each other even more is extraordinary. It is, it really is. Yes. I didn't think I could love her any more than I already did. And yet all of my altars are growing and as they're growing, they're bringing their love for my mom with them and it gets stronger. So, as each of my altars reach the age that they choose to be, as they bring their love for mum, 
It just gets stronger and stronger. And it's not just the love of a small child anymore. It's like as they get older and grow, so too does their love for mum. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our extra minute segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au and the 9now app.